Hey everyone, this is Nick. Uh, it's been a while since I put out a tutorial uh, for a multitude of reasons, but I'm going to go ahead and put out a new one now. And it's, I'm going to show you how to use tessellation and displacement maps. Um, a tessellation works by multiplying, or I should say dividing the polygon count on the model. Here's a basic spaceship that I have loaded in. It's called a Terran Bomber. Um, and as I mouse over, you can see the polygons that are that make up that model. We can go up to display a wireframe and you can see a little bit better. Uh, what tessellation actually does is it splits these down to give it finer detail. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, first off, you're going to need a couple texture maps. The particular texture maps that I have on this are very basic. Uh, I just wanted to give it a bit of color to make this video and to test out the tessellation. But maps that I have here, uh, I have, they're all Terran bombers, but then I have the DDN map which is what is used for displacement uh, it's pretty much a normal map with underscore DDN tacked on to the end uh, the DDN part is very important it's not it just simply won't work without it uh, so even if it's a normal map you make sure you have that d underscore DDN and then during runtime it'll change it to a DDS file uh, I've also got my diffuse map as you can see just pretty much made everything solid colors to make it easy to see uh, I got a displacement map. Now, the displacement map in here I made wrong. I, I just pretty much turned a uh, bump map into a displacement map, which you cannot do, because uh, it'll puff it out instead of sink it in. Uh, and then I have my regular normal map, and then a spec map. Uh, but the way that they're arranged inside of the material editor is what makes the difference. Let's see, you got the diffuse map here, I got my spec map there, and then we got this bump map. Now, notice during this bump map, instead of using my normal map that I had listed, I'm using this underscore ddn.tiff. Uh, and that's so we could take advantage of the tessellation. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's two types of tessellation here. You got Fung tessellation and PN triangles tessellation. Uh, the Fung tessellation, I don't recommend you use on anything that's kind of like a hard body surface, like a ship or anything metal or anything like that is. Whenever it you apply it, it puffs the model out. And I'll show you real quick. As you can see around the edges, how it puffs it out. I'll take that off. Um, but what we're going to be mainly working with is PN triangles tessellation. We'll turn that on. And while you can't tell much of a difference here, that's mainly because I didn't put a whole lot of detail into that normal map. But if you go to your wireframe mode, you'll see what it does. You see how it subdivides quite a bit. Um, and then as you zoom out, the subdivision becomes less and less. Uh, kind of like a, a replacement for LODs. And then once you have this in here, you could you or at least once you have the PN triangles box checked, you can go through and change some of the settings here, like tessellation, a face cutoff, tessellation factor, and you can see some changes as I zoom up. You can see the changes to the mesh, but we'll leave that at one for now. And then for a displacement map, uh, I'll show you how to use that. Uh, but like I said, the one that I have is wrong. It's gonna mess it up. Uh, pretty much the only thing you have to do with the displacement map, you don't actually have to map it out inside of the material editor uh, in the texture maps above here. The only thing that you have to do is have uh, the displacement map in the same folder that the diffuse map is in. And it has to be named underscore DISPL at the end. And then it'll turn it to the that DDS at runtime. But just by having this in the same folder as the diffuse, it allows you to be able to use the uh, displacement map. And to do that, you can go down here and just check it. Now, as you can see on here, how it puffs it all up. That's because I have my bump map instead of my displacement map. Uh, and so it's doing the exact opposite of what I want it to do. But that should get you started on uh, using some of the DirectX 11 features with the CryEngine.